Hey folks, Landstrider here, and thank you for tuning in to episode 12 in Utopia of Resurrection. I'm up here on the space station now, which we've mostly got uh, moved in. We've got all the machines from, from down below, moved them up, and we've uh, been doing a lot of putting things in place and decorating and basically enhancing different things. So we can see that the core computer here uh, with the uh, uh, the ME controller up there at the center there that controls pretty much everything for the time being and and we may expand this later to be a bigger structure if we if we decide we need a bunch more channels on the main system but I think we're gonna alleviate that problem by using subnets as as much as we need to so we should never really need more than that one controller block right there uh, we've got a drive you can see that it's pretty much full of item types at this point from just uh, all the different n massive amount of different items that are available in the game uh, basically mostly through from Greg Tech I got a couple extra drives over here just in case uh, those get all the way filled up and then we've got two more empty drive bays around the bottom here for now and those um, we probably will expand to more drives later on now if you if we look around and see that I have one spot here that's glass so that I can see that cable that goes down so I can uh, see the amount of channels that are being used up on that and I'll take a quick look down here I think I've shown all this already I might rearrange this a tiny bit but for the most part it's working really good um, we've got our biofuel being generated from the uh, berry farm up top and that is going into this drum as a secondary storage so I got a full drum of, of backup plus I have two-thirds of a drum inside the machine itself so and if by any means or if by chance we are using power so fast that those empty out there is a backup system down here of uh, fuel now it does only it only has a little bit of fuel in it like there's a you know eight buckets of fuel or whatever but that's enough that if somehow we managed to to completely clear out all the biofuel that would give the biofuel reactor just a little bit of time to go ahead and catch back up to the system and then go ahead and start refilling it with biofuel again so I don't think that that should ever kick on unless we really are doing a lot of heavy processing and using 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 of uh, materials and stuff now one of the things I noticed about my garden up here is because it's 17 by 17 the corner plots are 6 by 6 and then the five in the middle, down the center and down the center this way, are, are, are only five by five. So that means that if some crop doesn't grow quite as fast as other crops, you can put them in the corner. Of course, corners are minus one because I have the, uh, uh, the lily pads there. But you can put them in the corner to make up for their lower productivity because there'd be considerably more of them planted, like, um, let's see, six six and five that'd be like 11 extra plants of those things and uh raccoon go on ahead and set up his his golems up here to do some fishing for us he just i don't know where he's off to but he wants to find something over there um and yeah it's been producing all kinds of stuff we need to we need to clean this up a bit i think we want to give them a little shed and contain all of that stuff in the shed up here instead of having it just along the edge there so uh, i think that's about it for the tour nothing else oh no there's one other thing I need to show you the cobble generator so down here we have just one transfer node with a couple of world interaction upgrades so that it produces a little bit faster than just standard uh, feeding into cyclic assembler which goes ahead and compresses the cobblestone sends it on to the next one which makes it double compressed to the next one triple compressed all the way down to sextuple compressed cobblestone we're going to be using some of that today for some crafting here in a little bit because we want to make our portal to the deep dark and i also want to make the qed from whoop, we got our loader down here on the bottom uh so we're lo we're we are loading our base now continuously that helps with uh keeping the garden going making a good backup supply of fuel and stuff and if we look in the system we can see that we have a good amount of biomaterial backed up no problem 
tons of rubber. So we might need to switch a rubber tree out for something else for a little while. Uh, because I think that that rubber, that much rubber is going to do for now. Um, so today, one of the first things I want to talk about is I, I've been running around with my golden bag of holding. I lost all my stuff once by falling into the void. I want to alleviate that problem for the future. So for now, oh, I needed that. <laughs> uh, rose red. And uh, what was the other? Um, sodalite, which is uh, considered blue dye. It's going to give me a purple dye. I only need one, technically. Um, because what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've claimed some some uh, color combinations for myself, and I've also claimed some color combinations for the conglomerate for general usage around the space station and stuff. I don't know how much we're going to need, but I figured I'd better put lay claim to them now while we could. Um, green is a real easy color to get. Purple's not too bad because we have tons of sodalite, and rose red is really not that hard. So I figure I would use these colors. So I need to set up a chest. Um, somewhere up here. We'll just put it over here in the corner for now. And uh, my colors are, um, let's see, green, green, purple. Green, purple, and then I'm just going to go with green as my third color for my generic chest. That's going to be my, my generic chest. And what I want to do is I need another ender pouch, so let me go grab that. I probably could use this one. This stuff that's in there, we'll pull that out. Um, and I'll put those tanks in the main system here in a minute. And actually just use this one. But what I want to do first, oops, I do need something else though. I want to lock this frequency to be per personal or private to my, my own stuff, basically, so that nobody else can access this unless they actually walk up to that particular ender chest in my area, which you know, hopefully people won't be poking around in my area too much. Um, but if somebody, I don't want them to accidentally be able to pull things out from somebody, from, from someplace else other than right here. So if I was to die or whatever, or fall into the void, you know, uh, something would happen that I wouldn't be able to get my stuff back. I want to be able to come back to this chest and then get it, get it back. So if I take a diamond and click it right onto that right there, is that it? There we go. This now becomes a private ender pouch that is only mine. So it's basically a private frequency. Now, if somebody else walked up to a nobleman, did they'd still be able to access the stuff that was in this specific uh, ender frequency? But if somebody else made an ender chest with uh, green, purple, green, someplace else in the world, they would not have access to the contents of this chest. So now I take my ender pouch and click it, and we can see that it is now an ender pouch cons um, with that frequency, that green, purple, green, and it says Land Strider. You can see the little diamond um, uh, icon on there too. That's kind of nice. So now I can use this to contain all of my extra stuff. Actually, I don't, don't need the, the tank in there. Uh, so yeah, that's going to contain all my, um, so now I put my back, got to click it on something that doesn't have an interaction thing, uh, put my bag of holding in there, and now if I did die for any reason or fell into the void for, for you know, being stupid or, or whatever, I wouldn't lose all this stuff, which, you know, this is important stuff, so I got, because I'm carrying around, I was carrying around the unlinked extra unlinked books, uh, the Tesseract, a filler, you know, all kinds of stuff that I wouldn't want to lose. The diamond dolly, that's that's expensive to replace. Um, and my mining lasers in there, etc, etc. So now if something silly happens, it'll just be in my ender pouch. I can come back up here and access it from that chest right there. All right, let me put these ender tanks away because we I don't need those for today for anything. And let's get on to the next bit of crafting that I wanted to do. Uh, we see in here that I did get together the uh, blast furnace. I'm not sure if that was if that was put together at the end of the last video or not. But yeah, we got the blast furnace going. We've got all these machines. Um, 
uh, Teddy put together some machines for for working with build craft stuff. These are basically we made these because we needed them for build craft. Uh, the mixer will allow us to mix dyes, um, liquid dyes, and then that'll get pushed over into the chemical bath, and we can use the chemical bath to create certain build craft parts that are apparently bugged and not uncraftable in the build craft table. And if you look over here, you can see that we've started making this the build craft lab. This is not nearly done, and we are going to put like the forestry machines and everything like that in here. I think now we keep changing my I keep changing our minds. We keep changing our minds about where we're going to put things, uh, but just we're just laying it out as we go, and uh, wherever seems to be good at the time, that's where it ends up. So we've got this nice laser lab uh, with the assembly table and the integration table, and uh, this is just basically to, to to hold the stuff that's coming out of there for now. Uh, eventually that would probably have a uh, interface from from below it in order for it to go right back into the ME system but uh, there's a few things in here that are not craftable like if you try to build the build craft pipe wire in here it just does not seem to work I don't know if that's because of grade tech or if it's just the bug version of build craft but at, at any rate we are not currently able to to do those in the assembly table but we can do them in the Greg Tech machines over here. So that's how our way around those bugs or and or possibly it just might be thing that Greg Tech is doing to the uh to, to the recipes. I'm not sure. So yeah, build 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 craft lab over there working on that a little bit. Uh, so we're able to do a few more interesting things with build craft. And but sadly one of the mo one of the things I really wanted it for one of the things I really wanted the build craft assembly table for was to make facades to cover up my build craft pipes, particularly these ones in here. These couple of exposed build craft pipes where I'm just voiding out materials. I want to cover those up. Um, unfortunately, that one's another one of the broken ones, one of the another broken recipes that's bugged, and there's no recipe for them with the Greg Tech machine either, so there's no way around it. So until we upgrade, or until the 1.1.0, or 1.0.1, update comes out um, I'm afraid I can't make those and hopefully that update will fix that problem we'll, we'll all just have to wait and see but uh, back to the Greg Tech machines that I want to upgrade today so in order to continue in our uh, quest for high-tech stuff uh, we, we've run into a bit of a wall here because we need to have a vacuum freezer in order to be able to make the stuff to upgrade to upgrade the blast furnace and to make the next tier up of certain machines. Certain 512 machines require um, particular cables. I think it's uh, copper nickel or something like that, or canthanol. canthanol. Um, so if we look at coils, one of the things I want to do is I want to upgrade the uh, blast furnace to using the nichrome blocks, giving it the maximum heat capacity and probably making it work faster. Or at least being able to do all the recipes. And the other thing that is needed for a bunch of the 512 machines is canthanol wire. So if we backtrack to canthanol, to get a canthanol ingot, you must use a vacuum freezer on a hot canthanol ingot. Now we have some hot canthanol ingots because we made some of those in the blast furnace already, which is to basically use some canthanol dust and blast furnace it. Um, problem with that is we need a vacuum freezer now to cool it off. I think it might even still be in there. Yeah, it is. Oh, we got some stainless steel in there too. Uh, so we need a vacuum freezer to cool it off. Well, the problem with making a vacuum freezer is we needed to make, um, uh, hang on, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, we need some circuits. We need these circuits right here, these data processor circuits, in order to make that uh, vacuum freezer. In order to do that, we need these things right here, the data storage circuits, which require engraved crystals. These things right here, we have an emerald lens, but if we look down here, we can see that it requires 480 volts. Well, the only engraver that we have is a 128 volt machine so we need a 512 version of the engraver um, in order to be able to make those 
So Dornell was kind enough to go ahead and put together all the subparts for these, and they are they are quite extensive. These are really a pain in the butt to put all these together. If we look at some of the recipes, we know that the piston requires um, rods and gears and motors, which require more rods and wires, etc. And then uh, I don't know what emitter takes. Oh, it takes an emerald and some circuits and some rods. And then uh, robotic arms are really crazy because there's two more motors, circuits, pistons, etc., etc. And conveyor belts aren't ridiculously bad, but they're still, you know, tedious because two motors, you know, etc. So he went together and went ahead and put together all these parts for me. So I would be able to easily assemble these machines and install them in where they need to go. So let's go ahead and get the first one. And if we bring them out right in order and put them in our crafting grid, we should get a laser engraver. Now I've already ran a uh, 512 wire from over there. Because these remember, these are 512 machines over here. These are high voltage or however you want to say it. And it's not... It's not too an, it's not a very excessive amount of wire because remember it only requires like 480. So I could have run it even further. I'm only dropping like I think maybe 10 volts at the most to the very farthest machine. So it just it comes from right over here. I thought about making a whole nother transformer and and uh, a transformer set um, IC2 and Greg Tech transformer set for this, but. I've decided against it because I think eventually we're going to take these 112 machines out and move these 512 down and have them be the only um, machine that we use here. Uh, now what I did to keep them wires from connecting is I used rubber sheets to go ahead and apply those to the wire below to prevent this wire from connecting it and blowing these machines up. So there we go. There's our laser engraver. 512 version. So this one is going to get our Terra lens and it's going to get and then I can now use my olivine plates to still have to start making some circuit stuff. Okay so while that's crafting up let's go ahead and get the next machine ready to go which is some wires, some advanced circuit or advanced circuits of course and HV high voltage machine casing and this is going to be the form presser I believe yeah forming press that's gonna go ahead and go right there the reason I like to put these in this order because then I can just have this thing go ahead and let's see I need to get well, some of these things uh, that are in my um, pouch I need to actually like move up into the the regular the, a level up into the ender pouch uh, especially all of the tools probably that I have two crowbars okay I'll put that crowbar away because the uh, the railcraft crowbar will work for for doing Greg tech related stuff okay that can stay um, I use this quite often Okay, I think the rest of that stuff can stay in there. Actually, I don't know why I have string in here. That could probably just go in there. Okay. So let's put that back. All this stuff back for now. All the thing I really needed right this moment was the Greg Tech wrench. And then I want to tell this thing to eject to that side. So when you ever, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, how this specifically works, but this is probably a good time for it. Now, if, whenever you're holding a Greg Tech wrench, you get this grid on the face of a block. If you click the center of the block, it makes the output face you. If you click any of the side center squares, it makes that output go to that side. So if I click that, you can see that it changed that side to be the square that indicates that's the output side. If you click the any of the corner blocks on the, on the face, it'll make it face the opposite side that you clicked. So it would go to the back if I clicked any of those corners. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I thought it was a good time to mention it because what I'm doing now is I'm setting this up to automatically eject. Now, the first button here is for liquids. The second button is for items, right? Or did I get it backwards? 
We'll find out as soon as it finishes its current item because it'll attempt to eject. I don't think it'll do it while it's in the middle of a crafting process. Okay, I got that backwards. First button is items, second button is liquids. Let me make sure that I have this set. I have them both set to eject to the sides. I, I still think it's it be the second button that makes it eject. Let's see here. Is it going to go this time? Doesn't seem to want to do it. Let's just make sure they're both highlighted. <laughs> Wait, what? What's this one? Okay, so it's the second button. Okay, that's, that's right. Try one more time. Make sure that it's okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. That should work, but I don't know why it's not. That's why it's being fussy with me right now. Let's just move on and make the final machine, which is the assembly machine. So we're going to have yet another assembly machine. So I'm going to have to get some solder into this one somehow. Um, and I think I'll keep the lower, this assembly machine around later. I'll probably move it because I can use this one to keep the glue in to make duct tape. And I'm sure there's glue, glue is useful for a few other crafting recipes, I'm pretty sure. Um, is it still not accepting stuff? Auto eject. That, that is kind of weird. Okay, well, what if I go tell it to go to the back? I don't know. It should be putting stuff straight into here because this one works that way. No problem. Okay, and then we're going to set this one up to do the same. Auto eject into there. Maybe it'll start working randomly here in a little bit. But now i got to get some soldering in there some soldering stuff in there so that I can go ahead and start making those advanced circuits. Um, that's as far as I'm going to get on this today. I think I'm going to go ahead and save the actual putting together the freezer for the next episode. But those are the parts I needed to be able to make that freezer. I wanted to show you that because it was all ready to go. Uh, the next big thing I want to be crafting today is all that extra utility stuff. So first things first, we need a QED. QED. There we go. And that's going to require some infused obsidian. Actually, let's go to the actual crafting terminal over here. I'm almost thinking that we don't really need these um, interface. These ones, I'm thinking about replacing those with crafting terminals just because I keep walking up to them wanting to craft in them and I can't. I don't know how the other guys feel about that. Probably they don't care, but um, let's get that up again. QED. So we're going to need some eyes of Ender. Let's go ahead and get a few of those. I know we're going to need them for some other stuff. We're going to need some obsidian etched stone. We're going to get at least two stacks of those to start with because I need five for this. Um, and there's a sixth. And I'm going to need some burnt quartz. So I'm going to have to get some quartz. Ooh, I don't have a ton of it ready to go. But... Let's see, I need four blocks of it. I'm only going to do as much as I need for now because that's I'm really low on quartz, nether quartz. So that's going to be one of the things I have to do between this episode and next. I definitely need to go to the nether and get some quartz, but I want to be using a nether quarry for that. I don't think it, I think it's okay if I use that in the nether. And can, can it go in there? No? What's it, uh, what am I doing wrong? So, burnt... Burnt quartz has to be chiseled. Um, this is a block of quartz, yes. That's a block of quartz, yes. In a redstone furnace. Doesn't seem to want to go in there. Um, not sure why. Let's see, what happens if I do this? Nothing. Did I make, I made the right stuff, right? Quartz. Uh, what if I did Certus Quartz? What would that give me? Certus Quartz block. That's not it. I um, also got Quartzite. Is that 
that do anything? No. Let's try a standard furnace. And just for giggles. Okay, it'll go in there. Okay, I'm not sure why it wouldn't go into the redstone furnace, but it will go in there. We'll get it done this way. Okay, and then going back over here to look up the QED recipe again is, see I need the diamond etch matrix, so I just need the four pieces of burnt quartz. I can put that together and in a second I will have the QED. Now the QED by itself is not going to do um, what I need it to do. I'm going to have to make something to go along with that. Which I can't even remember what it's called so we'll have to look that up here in a second. So there's my Diamond X Matrix. So now, oh, no crafting table in there. There we go. QED. Got it. I'm going to just go ahead and break that. Put it back. Now, the next thing is um, I'm going to look up the extra utility stuff because I don't remember what it's called. There it is right there. Ender Flux Crystal. I need some of these, so that's going to be some more ender-infused obsidian. So yeah, I think I'm going to need some more ender-infused obsidian. And we'll go ahead and get about that much of it for now. And let's see, we've got two of those. Well, I'm thinking I would like to have at least three, if not four or five of these. Let's go with... I think I'm going to need some more of this, too. Does that give me enough for five total? Nope. One more bit of infused obsidian. There we go. This is a very nice building block, too, the infused obsidian. So, okay. The place to put this. Well, I'm thinking that it's kind of a magical type thing, so I'm going to put it over here um, in, in the magic room, I think. And we will... Let's see, I don't know where. Uh, we got this thing set up too. We're going to do some automation with that. And again, not in today's episode though. Where do I want to Where do I want to put this? Where do I want to put this? Um, well, I got five of the things. So if I put it there. Now I want to I want to put a uh, I want to put an automation on that wall. So I don't want to I don't want to block that up. But if I put it right right there and then I take these things and I was thinking of putting them on the ceiling let's see so one straight above it oh I can't really put one right there okay so that would mean I need to move this out one more because I want to be able to put there 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 yeah this is a good spot right here there, 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 and there. There we go. That looks good. Kind of like the, uh, kind of similar to the way the build craft works with the lasers and stuff. So now I should be able to craft some stuff with this. And the main reason I wanted to have this is because I want to make a uh, torch, a magnum torch. And if we look at that, it requires that it be made in a QED. And, uh, I don't have the potions or anything ready to go, so again, that's not going to happen in the video, but I wanted to show you the process of making the QED. This is also necessary for many other recipes, like making the special nodes, retrieval nodes, uh, making the energy nodes, making um, the remote uh, remote things for, for sending things across long distances using Ender or using extra utilities. Uh, stuff. It's also necessary for making the ender markers. It's going to be necessary for using the um, ender quarry. So that's next is the ender quarry. 
which hopefully I have a good portion of the uh, stuff ready to go and to quarry. So first thing before anything else is we need to think about getting the Buildcraft Quarry. Buildcraft Quarry is a bunch of gears except for this. The diamond drill can be kind of nasty. Some titanium sheets, a mining drill, which again, I think we actually have an extra mining drill in the uh, system. So that's, we have at least a start up on the wrong terminal again. We do have a start on that. So if we look at Quarry again, we're going to do it go with this and we need to put one of these together do we have everything we have some diamonds oh, so I need another industrial diamond I think I might actually have that ready to go over here I was making some industrial diamonds earlier I don't think you see me do that on a previous episode so uh, no mystery on how I'm getting those I don't think and then the other thing was titanium plates so we've got, I've got uh, Oh, the frostproof machine casings. That's nice. We have those ready to go, but we don't have the. Uh, we can't make the controller yet. For good thing I looked in there before I started making the freezer. Uh, so I need some titanium plates. Now this should still be. This should be. Yeah, there it goes. So it should be able to make titanium plates for me, or titanium ingots, and then I can press those into the plate. And I think I just. I just need two. But they, t they do take a while to make, like a couple minutes each, I think. So while that's happening, maybe I can get together, come over here and get the gears and stuff together for the rest of the, uh, the, uh, Cory. Cory, and let's see, so steel gears. Um, let's actually use our forming press, or our, uh, uh, so these th three steel. Oh, let's use our uh, extruder. That's what I'm trying to say. We used to use the extruder to make some gears. Should be a gear thing pattern in there. There we go. So I need three gears of those. Uh, some gold gears. And the extruder is really nice. It uses only half of the material, I think, that um, a regular gear would use. Or if you was using the uh, the mold instead in the alloy smelter. The alloy smelter takes, I think, eight ingots. Where the advanced extruder only uses four per, per gear. Okay, so next is gold. Okay, put that, put that back. What was the other gears? I think it's diamond gears. I'm not sure that I can extrude those. Corey, Buildcraft, uh, or Great Tech. Okay. I cannot extrude those, but I can just make the Buildcraft version, which is, I believe, cheaper. Uh, I think that's going to be two extra gold gears though if we look yep two extra gold gears surrounded by diamonds so I'm just gonna go ahead and press out four gold gears let's check on this progress of this okay we got our titanium ready to go so let's take it and put it into the the roller over here and I, before I forget I want to put my this plate back in here just in case somebody needs it I don't anybody's going to meet in the next few moments, but now hopefully that gear will work for, um, yeah, it will. It, that gear will work for the Buildcraft recipe. Two titanium sheets, so I believe I can go out and finish the drill. Since it was uh, in this crafting grid out here, there we go, diamond drill. Okay, and well, the, the the gold is kind of. I figured the gold would be faster because it's soft metal, and I figured it wouldn't take as long to to craft. But get some diamonds. One, two of those. All right, Corey, and 
shift to click that in all we need now is the two gold gears and we have our buildcraft quarry which we don't want to use I don't, I don't particularly like buildcraft quarries um they work pretty good i mean granted but they are not very server friendly so we are not using those at all and i think i think everybody's on the servers pretty much agreed that, that it would be a bad idea to use them so everybody's going right to the ender quarry if they make a quarry at all but and, and it, which is considerably better in many in many senses in many many ways it is better because it, it only loads at most two chunks at any given time whereas the ender quarry loads the entire area that it's quarrying out um, and then that may not be accurate with the latest version, but uh, I mean that's always the way that I understood it. This quarry goes top layer down, whereas the ender quarry goes column by column all the way to bedrock. So we want to do the ender core. We need another diamond matrix, some ender cores, some endothermic pumps. That might be a little difficult. I got to get some lava. So I might have to go down to the surface for that. But if we put these in here now, we should be able to get a build craft quarry. Nice. So next up on the ender quarry list, ender cores. Do we have the stuff for that? Not even close. Um, I might have some. I have the ender cores down on the surface from where I was growing ender pearls, and those need to come up anyway. Uh, so, and I'm going to need some buckets of lava. I should have some extra buckets in here. Yes, I do. Um, I only need two buckets of lava, I believe. Let me check that. So, if we look at Corey again from over here. This right here. Um, so, I'm going to need to make two endothermic pumps which is diamonds not a problem so I need yeah two buckets of lava and two buckets of water oh, not too bad um, so let's go down the surface and grab some lava from somewhere and pick up our ender cores from that garden down there we'll use a couple of those and I'll place them later when I go ahead and rebuild the garden because we have more ender lily seeds anyway so I need to make it bigger and find a good place for it in the space station and of course it's nighttime. Every time I come down to the surface, it seems like it's nighttime. So we want to get these guys. Yeah, because they're not even they're not growing down here anymore, because there's nobody down here loading the area, so no point in having them down here. And I want to fill that in so the water doesn't just go everywhere. Give me a something from down here. It looks like I'm hungry. Gotta love them. Bacon bean burgers. Or actually, uh, mushroom bean burgers. This is, <laughs> that's all that I used to craft them. Um, okay, now we get these back. Okay, I'll use a couple of those in the crafting recipe, and then I'll save the other ones for later. Let's go ahead and put that away. And I do have a pair of wings now, so that I don't have to use up energy in, on flight. I actually fly faster with wings than if I use the uh, jet jetpack. So, for the most part, I'm using that. Um, I like to turn the jetpack on for when I'm working over the void because then, if I do accidentally um, start to fall or anything like that, I just float down because I'm in hover mode. I so I prefer that when I'm working over the void or anything like that. But for the most part, I'm not using jetpacks now, just to save energy. Um, also, I need to turn back on my thing. Where is it at? There we go. Energy level. Uh, down here. Should be a couple bit. Get that lava that I had exposed the other day when I was looking. Yeah. So I need two things of lava. Put them in my bag so I don't take damage while I'm taking them back up to the station. And flying up these steps definitely is faster than just walking up them. Now if I had like Boots of the Traveler or something, that would probably make me move faster. But sadly, I don't have... Uh, you can't upgrade the Nano Boots in any, in any manner. 
Um, also, I suppose while I'm going by it right here, I can show you that we have a big giant hole over here. Well, this is where our uh, shuttle is going to sit. You know, the, the rocket boosters are going to be down in the ground a bit. And then uh, the shuttle is going to be like right over this area, I think. Yeah, that's that's about right. Um, so yeah, we cleared. I cleared out all that out with the filler. That made it a lot easier. And of course, while it was while it was breaking blocks and stuff, I was going through and collecting the ores that I was exposing. So that was uh, I did get a little bit of ore that way. I didn't let it all go to waste. Get back up there and finish this off. I think I've got everything. Um, probably should get that other bucket of water. Well, oops. Don't go, need to go into the cargo hold of the shuttle. Uh, let me grab out of here. There's one bucket of water in there. Go fill the other one up. Upstairs. Out of the pond. Put that away. Put those away. There we go. All right. So put those in there. Get the lava buckets out of my inventory and try to get them in here real quick. Oh, took one tick. Not a big deal. Didn't even hardly hurt. Okay, so back to getting our quarry built. Uh, this thing right here. So we need two of these. So we're going to need some iron picks. We need two of those. We're going to need a bunch more ender. Ender infused stone. We'll just get a bunch of it ready to go. And diamond and eyes of ender again. So we get... Uh-oh. Um, we need to pulverize a blaze rod. I only made I only had enough to make one eye vendor. I need two. So definitely always want to pulverize these because then you get four blaze rods. You also have a chance of getting some sulfur. Sulfur is not um, very important to me because we just have so much of it and we get it from various processes or processing. So, um, but it is nice to get the two or get the four instead of the two. So uh, save you some blaze rods, especially if you have a hard time getting them in the first place. Okay, and so I just need another eye vendor. And then finally, I should be able to make two of these. One, two. Good. Now I need to make another one of these, I think. Uh, which means I need four more burnt quartz. Ugh. Four more burnt quartz. Um, do I have enough for four? I don't think so. Because I need... 16 total so let's see i should have a little bit more quartz dust woo very little so i am going to be completely out of quartz when i'm done here but that is a noisy noisy machine where's my mufflers so i made a bunch of uh, muffler upgrades for the more noisy reg tech machines It's not being quiet yet. There it goes. So, okay, so you have to stop the process and then restart it again. And then now that machine will never make noise again because that's one of the really noisy ones, chemical reactor. Uh, the other one of the real noisy ones is the distiller. I've already silenced that one. Very, very good idea to keep those quiet. Let me try this again. Let me try putting these in here again. It's supposed to go in here. Will not go in there. Um, oh, we'll just get the furnace out again. A vanilla furnace. And set it down. No, I have no problem wasting a little bit of charcoal. We get tons of charcoal. Because if I process... Um, if I process rubber wood in here, it produces a ton of wood pulp, which gets turned into compressed sawdust, and then we get uh, 
charcoal out of that. And then this can go in here, and I'll get some rubber, some plastic, and plant balls, which I have really no use for. The glue will go up and get voided. Okay, and how are we doing over here? Almost done. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to really show you this. I might have to, to cut to... Uh... So there's one other thing I want to do today. One other thing I want to craft, and that's going to be the portal to the deep dark. And that was always that's always a fun one to put on camera, just in case I screw up and blow up. Um, so Corey, uh, I need this first. There we go. That should be everything. Ender Corey, look at that. Isn't that pretty. That is a pretty sight. Uh, so. Well, the, the next thing we need is the markers. We could use fence to mark out the outside edge, but I much prefer to use the markers. That way, I only got to put some at the corners. Uh, so, oops, wrong button. Ah, I can't type. I'm trying to type over around my microphone. Ah, uh, so Ender infused stone and Ender pearl. So I need. A couple of those. And there we go. Six of those. Actually, that might work out just right. And an ender pearl. I might need more, but um, I have to look up. I probably have to look up exactly how to use these. And actually, I think if I do this, no, it doesn't tell me. Um, now, if I look at the information on this it tells you that uh, somewhere in here that he uses fences um, nether brick or wooden uh, so that's a little bit out of date he added the um, ender markers but I don't know exactly how many you need so I'm hoping that you only need two or three you might need four so I'll put that there, and you should see particles going down into it from those, yep. Yeah. And it'll craft it up here in just a second. Makes a nice hum. Now you, the more of these uh, Ender Flux crystals you have, the faster this thing crafts. So there we go, we're getting those. And... Okay, I think that's... So, so I'm just going to let that go, and I'm going to go on to making the next thing that I want to make. So that's going to be, let's put these things away. So the next thing I want to make is the portal to the deep dark. Right here. And this is a challenge, because, well, for one, you need the compressed cobblestone. And remember I showed you that earlier, that we're making compressed cobblestone down there, and that's one of the main reasons I wanted it. And four unstable ingots. So that's a little bit of a challenge. So we're going to need some diamonds. We're going to need at least four of them. We're going to need some iron. Again, four iron. We're going to need our sigil. We're going to need a vanilla crafting table. We've got some wood right here. Just make one up real quick. Super Vanilla Crafting. I'm going to go ahead and put that away. Um, and I'm not going to do this up here, because if I actually did blow up on the space station, I'd end up down, way down there on the platform with no way to get back up to the main station. So I don't want to do it up here on the surface. I want to go down, down to the old treehouse and put, do it there, just in case I do manage to kill myself. So next... What am I doing? I need got that, got that. Oh, I need the I need the cobblestone. That's why I need the cross cobblestone, which should be downstairs. Grab that and check the recipe. Not deep six, just deep. Uh, quintuple and quadruple. So this should have quadruple four of those 
and one quintuple. We we'll have enough to do several of these actually, and there's even more in there. So no problem. Gonna be no problem making this, I don't think. Okay, so down to the surface I go to do this. And I'll show you my method. Okay, come over here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some kind of block. Just grab a stack of cobblestone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that cobblestone. I probably didn't even need to bring the crafting table. There's probably one down here. You know, right there. Oh well. I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to go ahead and arrange this. So diamonds on the bottom, iron at the top, right? So I want these to be, to show up in my inventory right close to the crafting table so that I don't have to move them very much. I want them to go right here so I can move them up real quick. And then I'm going to replace the center piece with the quintuple compressed cobble. This is going to go into the outer corners. Let's double check that. Yes, the outer corners. So all I need to do is shift click this. I'm going to get my four pieces. I'm going to move them up real quick into the four sides. Grab the quintuple, move it up to the center, bring that back down, swap it with the that circle, click click the craft. Okay, here we go. Done. Ooh with time to spare. All right, so now we got our portal to the deep dark. I do not think that this will work in a, in a void age. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put it right here. Um, they don't know where else to put it. Seems to be, seems like it should be okay. So what happens if I go over here? First time over here for me. Uh, it might be generating a new area of the deep dark because I don't think there's been a portal created in this general vicinity. Um, and I may or may not decide to let me in. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, I think I must have knocked Rorax off. Sorry, Rorax. Um... <laughs> Probably because it's just the amount of lag. Okay, so you, when you first come to the deep dark, you end up in a little room with lots of light. Now, I think anybody that knows anything about the deep dark, you do not want to go into the darkness. So you want to make sure you have lots of, of torches or some kind of light source um, to avoid getting uh, attacked by the darkness. So I think that is about where I want to leave off. I'm going to go ahead and head back. Um, we've got my ender quarry, which I'm going to go ahead and set up over there, I think. Actually, before I set my ender quarry up in the deep dark, I'm going to use it to get some nether quartz in the in the nether. And then uh, I think at the beginning of the next episode, I'll show you actually show you actually how I, how to set the, the portal up. I mean, not portal. Uh, set the uh, quarry up using those markers instead of using fence. Um, so yeah, those markers are done. But uh, yeah, I think that's as far as we're going to get today in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed uh, making videos and stuff for you. Uh, if you did, be sure and leave a like, a comment, thumbs up, and all that fun stuff. And uh, till next time, I will catch you later.